What would you say if Daddy and me had a little surprise for you today? Hooray! Uh, <laughs> hooray? You would say hooray? I love surprises. I don't know. Would you like to see what the surprise we got you might be? Yeah. yeah. Would you? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Your surprise is closer than you think. What did you just realize? Tell them. We got a new car. <gasps> a car. You see a car? <laughs> That's a new one, Juliana. What do you think? Do you guys want to check it out? Yeah. Hi, chicken nuggets, chicken nuggets, chicken nuggets. What do you guys think? You love it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today we're doing something a little different and I am gonna show you our new 2024 Kia Carnival. Because when I was looking at mom car and all these car views, there were some things that I just wanted to know that I couldn't get from there. So I'm gonna try to show you everything I can that I was wondering about before I purchased this guy. So just some quick specs. This is the Kia Carnival and this is in the color Astra Blue and I have the saddle brown interior, which looks like that. So to start off, I'll just show you some exterior features, ones that I cared about. It does have the um, blind spot assist. It also has all of the sensors here in the bumper for all of the you know safety things that you may need and parking and all that. It does have keyless entry and like in the night there is a light in here that lights up so that you can like better see the handle and stuff. I do like that. You can obviously like press this button to open it. If you're there with the key you can um, use the key fob. And then of course these doors here, you can also use this button to open it. You can pull it and then inside you have the little buttons here, like all minivans. And then up there, I'll show you in a minute, but up there are the buttons for the doors for in the front too. Coming around to the back, you do have the little button here that can open the trunk automatically but it does not have the power like you put your foot under and it like automatically upgates you it's called the power lift gate so it does have like the power kind of thing here but you can also turn the automatic off so that you can just kind of you know put it down and I will just note so many reviews show you exactly how this trunk space works and what it is this is my double bob, so like my biggest stroller that I have. fits totally fine and I still have quite a decent space here to be able to put groceries, things, storage, whatever it is. I can't show you the stow and go because we have car seats installed, but again, tons of other car review videos out there show you that so you can find it. It is just a one click button and this is the EX trim. So I just want to tell you that because it does not have the kick foot thing and when I saw on the leaflet that it had the power lift gate, I thought it had that. So power lift gate is just automatic. It's not foot censored. Only higher trims have that. Okay, moving into the driver's seat because this is like the features I wanted to know. First off, this seat is electronic. You can move it back and forth with a a button and it's electronic, but no other seats in the car have that. This passenger seat, nope. It's with a little pull bar, back and forth, and levers. These ones all, nope, all pull bar, back and levers. So the driver's seat is the only one that's automatic. Just wanted to note that. On the door here, we have a little storage cubby, which I don't really use. I think I said this, that we've been in this car now for one month. I've had this car for a month, so these are my thoughts after the first month. Um, 
yes, I have not really used this. Every once in a while, like if I'm in the passenger seat, like if my husband's driving, I'll use that one to put my phone or something if we have water and stuff here. All in all, I don't use this cubby space for much right now. You have the windows and the window lock and the mirror adjuster stuff here. Here, like I said, we have the left automatic door, right, the trunk, and then this is power door on and off. Here we have the instrument cluster, like you can make it brighter or lighter. This one here has to do with lane correction. So if you kind of, if the car senses that you're like crossing the line in a lane, it will gently like tug you back or, you know, kind of help you center again. You can turn it on and off. And then this one has to do with traction. On the steering wheel here, we have like Siri, kind of talk type thing, your mode button, which you can customize. Here's your volume up, down, and then if you press it, it mutes. This flips through stations, your call answer. This is another like specialty button that you can pick and program. I've programmed this one for the passenger camera. This flips through your um, little commands there, your whatever that is, cruise control, up, down. This goes through the different options in here. Here again, you have this um, driver lane thing. And actually, to be honest, I'm not sure what that is. Haven't used it. Here in the center, we have our big, large touchscreen, which I do really like. We also have the map button, navigation, radio, and media. Media is just either your Bluetooth or your Apple CarPlay or whatever you have plugged in. Here we have, you know, seek and track. This is another custom button that you can program. And then this brings you to like the settings where you can find the sound, tune. Here's your climate control. And then down here, this is a wireless charging pad. Here you have just some USBs and this one's like the program, like the real USB. These ones are just for charging. I have found that if you were going to use that, it has to be at a very particular position. Often I put it in there and it didn't even charge at all because it wasn't like right where it had to be in order to charge. So I don't think that's like 100%. Maybe it could be just be my phone case, but I'm not going to take my case off every time that I get into the car just to charge it, especially because this cord, this cord here is always plugged in because Apple CarPlay, this car does have it, only works through a wired connection. That I wish I would have known prior to purchasing the vehicle because I did not expect to have my phone corded up every single time. On the bright side, it's charging, and so I get that. I don't have to use the wireless thing, but I definitely didn't know that it had to be wired. I didn't know there were some models that were unwired and some that were wired, I guess. So Apple CarPlay, Android CarPlay, they do have to be wired. Okay, moving along here, we have cup holders and this is the wire your phone holder. Let me just put my phone in here, you can see it. Fits right in there. And then here you have the parking brake, which actually applies automatically when it senses you are on a hill, which is actually really cool. And it disengages automatically. So I have actually really liked that feature, but that is also the button in case you, you need it. Here you can cycle through the different drive modes, eco, smart, sport, you know, that sort of thing. Auto hold basically is when you stop, if you take your foot off the brake, it holds your position. If you have it off, then like when you take your foot off the brake, you will roll forward a little bit, you know, like a normal car. So that's what auto hold is. And then you also have here your seat warming options, which again are only front seat, both seats, but only the front, not the back. This is your parking indicator. So if you are too close to something and it's beeping, if this is on, if it's beeping, if you turn it off, it'll stop beeping. And here is your rear camera. I really appreciate that you can turn the parking off because if you are going to stop and you accidentally like park just a tad bit too close to somebody or stop and it's beeping, it will beep the entire time until that light turns green and you move. 
and sometimes it's just nice to be able to turn that off so I do appreciate that they have that there as for storage space you have this little slot here to store some things sometimes I'll put my sunglasses in there I guess they could also go over here but I don't like them in the door so sometimes I'll put sunglasses here and then this is just a big open cubby so in here I have my uh, cup adapter right in there most of my cups do fit in this but certain mugs my big 64 ounce water bottle do not so I do keep this in here in case I am using it and then I also bought this little insert that goes in here because I just did not love the just big open thing so here on this one I can have like a place for my coins I have like just a couple cards my gum in this pouch I have my car you know necessities that sort of thing but yeah, that's that. We also here do have two extra cup holders and an extra phone holder, which is nice because if my husband is ever in the car with me, we are taking up all four, I swear, or at least three. And it is important in this car because one thing that I don't love is this little guy here because this little storage compartment here in the door does not hold any of my cups. It does not hold like this little garbage can that I bought for it. The angle is just super weird. It like just doesn't work well. So I actually keep this little garbage can that I got in this one. That way I can reach it if I need to and my kids in the second row can reach it if they want to. Um, but yeah, the door storage just is not that great. The other thing that they do not have in here, like I mentioned, is no place to put your sunglasses. So that just seems like a miss on a minivan, to be honest. So I actually purchased these little like sunglass clips and I have one for each side. Um, I have one over there too for the passenger. Um, that's just to hold the sunglasses and then I have my tissue holder there too. And then just to give you like sizing here, this is the mirror, not huge, but it does have like, um, you know, the manual light. Over on the passenger side, like down here, if you can see it, there is like a little cubby spot underneath the passenger side guy here, but there is not one on the driver side, which I don't appreciate so much because there is no good place for your purse. There's no good place for a diaper bag. Um, I'm going to ask like as a Christmas stocking stuffer for a couple like clips for the things here that I could hang here because as of right now my purse just pretty much goes to the um, passenger seat but again if my husband's with me or something then that means it's going on the floor by his feet he hates that um, or it's going where I can't reach it I just there's no good place for a diaper bag purse thing I don't like that seems like a miss for a minivan again the glove box in general also honestly really small does not fit much it fits like the books and I've tried to put a couple other things in there doesn't really like work out that well so that's pretty much only for my manuals now which is fine I mean the only thing I used to really keep in my other one was uh napkins and I can just keep those in my in my middle guy now so it's not that big of a deal so let me get this turned on for you real quick and show you the screen here so First off, this is what the touchscreen looks like. It is very responsive. It, there's not like lag. It does work really well. Um, this is the built-in map, which I actually don't like because I am more partial to Waze. Um, but if I don't have my phone plugged in and I like need this, it does work. Of course, it doesn't let you use any of the keyboard stuff if you're actually driving, which I do get, like that's a safety thing, but when there's a passenger seat is seated there and like, I wish it could detect that there was a passenger and that they might be the one trying to do it because often my husband will be driving and I wanna type something or he's in the passenger and wants to try to find a location or type in a song name or something and you can't use any of that if the car's in motion and not in park and so, I get it, safety, but I do don't like that feature at the same time, if you know what I mean. I just plugged my phone in, so you do see Apple CarPlay here now, which I guess I can show you, um, and it basically mimics everything. It's great. I do really like this, and you can scroll through everything that, you know, does that. Um, and then if you want to go back to your Kia ones, you can just go here. 
It does have the passenger view and the passenger talk. Passenger view, this is the view you get. You can kind of see what I have right now. That's like the dark mode there. So I've got three car seats and two seats down you can see. And then of course it has the cabin talk, talk now. And now my voice is resonating through those back speakers. My kids love this. The one kind of feature I don't like is if you hit rear climate here, this changes your view no matter what you're doing. <laughs> if you have a map and you're trying to go somewhere and you hit that rear climate button, it shows up here, which again, some people might like this. This could be something that is really cool for some people. I just wish it didn't always pack, like pop up and interrupt what I was doing. I wish I have to like click this button to get this view and otherwise I could just use it here like it does for the front. Other thing that I don't like completely love is when you go to setup to move your speakers. When you are a mom, I feel like you're constantly adjusting where the sound is in your car. Sometimes you want it all in the back, sometimes you want it all in the front, sometimes you want it blah 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 blah, all the things. But if I have to have more than several click, like more than one or two clicks to get to that button, I don't like that. And I don't like that that's not a feature I can star or like just have on my, you know, control dashboard. I can't get to that one easy. So I click setup to get to this screen. You equally could also hit setup here and then you have to hit sound and then it's not even the first option. You have to go to position and then you can like move it around or like figure out where you want it, that sort of thing. But I don't love how many clicks it takes to get there. Other than that, pretty standard and you know, it's fun to play around with and figure out your your car and I'll let you do that. But those are the ones I wanted to point out. All right, so now we will move to the back and first I will show you my current car seat configuration. I have three kids, two forward facing, one is in a real car seat, one is in a booster, and then a rear facing two year old. So our current situation looks like this. I have this seat here all the way moved forward for the ease of the girls getting in the back. Both back girls get in this way. That is my three, almost four year old, and I have a little trash can there for her, needed. Um, and then this is my six year old booster, and then here over there I have my rear facing two year old. This seat I have down for the moment. They can put their cup holders there. She uses this at a table. It's actually probably more forward right now than we probably usually have it. Um, I will show you how to move it. And then this one, like I said, I do keep down. When we have four, because I am very pregnant at the moment, seven months pregnant, when the fourth comes, my plan is to remove this seat altogether have this one where the newborn goes. However, we just joined a carpool and we now pick up two other little kiddos twice a week. I think I'm gonna have to have all six seats in, so stay tuned, subscribe to this channel if you want to see in a couple weeks how we figured this out and how we fit six kids in here. Back here, rear air controls are up here. I really like that because in our last car they were down here and my kids kicked them and changed them all the time. So it's great that they're up here this time. Here is where you have your passenger talk sensors and your camera. It's important to note just because that is not where you can put a TV. Originally I was thinking we would get a TV installed and that's where it would go, just one for the car. It can't because of that, so. I don't know where it's gonna go, but we're gonna get one eventually. It'll probably either be on the back of the seats or maybe up there above, like more towards the front. I don't know. We're gonna ask our car person the best place. Also, we'll note that each seat does have its own charging port, both these two front seats here, and then the rear seats also each have one on either side over there. It's my kid's favorite feature of the entire car because they call it their tablet charger and they their favorite of all time thing. We also have sunshades at each window, which is really cute. Even the back ones here. And these ones here are nice and big. These are nice and big windows all together and they roll down the whole window, which is great. Like it's a huge window. So my kids really like that. There are four rear of these things as well. As a little fit check, I've got this seat, this seat and myself. I can squeeze in here. Leg room, very nice, not a problem. With two car seats, it's not the most comfortable. My arms definitely 
aren't great, but for a little kid, um, for the little kid our carpool, it's totally gonna be fine. Up here in the ceiling, this is where the third, the middle seat um, seat belt is. And it's kind of like a weird little thing. This pops out, this goes into the seat, and then you can move it over. So that is where that is. Um, again, here's the rear cabin sensors and all that. They are totally removable. You can take them out really, really easily. Literally, there's a, there's a lever here and it comes out super easy, I will admit. Other things to note, there is no roof or sunlight, sunroof in this model. You have to go upgrade for that. I did upgrade to the all weather mats. And then it's gonna be kind of hard to show you while I hold this camera and do this, but the seats themselves are very easy to move. So with one hand, let's see, I can move the sheet back and forth, easy, easy. Can't really do it with one hand here, but maybe one hand and a knee. I can lift this guy up. He does have the armrest here, which is nice. And yeah, it also has like the little tilt if you just wanna like go in and out of the car real quick, but don't wanna put the seat like all the way back. It does not lock the seat into the track unless this part is sitting up or all the way down. And I did find that annoying because my girl does like this, like down a little bit like this to get in. And I wish I could just leave it like this, but I can't because if it's leaned like that, it does not lock in the track. So you have to either have it all the way up and just up far on the track or it has to be all the way down to lock into the track. So this is literally just a tilt to get in and then you have to pull it back up. Otherwise your seat will go back and forth while you are driving. Again, the space in the foot room of this is really good. Even all the way back, my girls still have leg room and look how like much leg room is here. Like, seriously, this is me sitting here. With my legs out, I still don't even all the way get to the end of the mat. So this is pretty good clearance. Now this middle seat is pretty cool because I am pulling this lever back here. You can't see it very well, but there's a little uh, loop back here and I am holding it. This seat now is all the way forward. So it's a minding seat. So you can put that seat all the way forward and then your passenger seat there can move back so that they're almost like equal. So if you have a little infant and you're on a road trip, that's a great feature. But this one can also track. The track is like all the way back. So this guy can move literally all the way back there too. Don't need it right now, but if you stow and go that seat, and then you can move this one all the way back, it's like you've got a third row seat and captain's chairs. That is cool. These seats, like I said, are totally removable and they can be flipped. So they can go in the backwards way, which like, again, there's just so many different seat configurations. I really, really love that. And so, like I said, I kind of wish these would stow and go, but really, if they stowed and go, they wouldn't be able to do all this cool stuff. And I need the seats anyway, so I don't really need them to stow and go. It's just a thought. You can't have it all, and I guess I would prefer this. So, yeah, there, there we have it. I actually did save this too, just in case like you guys wanted to read through the features, take a screenshot, whatever, um, and just see kind of what this said. Um, it says, you know, you have your fuel economy here, city highway, dual, your annual cost, that sort of stuff. So take a screenshot if you want. Now I'm gonna close the doors real quick and just show you what is here. They have the window thing there, obviously, and then this is the water bottle place for this middle row. The back row, the third row, has two of them with um, a cell phone holder back there, but these ones only have the one here and then these here, which if they're being used by your front seat, then they're gonna have to use these here or their um, seat down ones here or their car seats, but there's options. There's options definitely for their drinks. And then here we have the kind of 12 volt and there is a bag hook here. I don't want my purse hook here this low. It's too low for me. I'd rather have it like up here, but I guess someone's bag could be here. 
These are just little pockets here. There are two of them. This one is stretchy. This one is really not. So this one is like maybe for paper or book. This one could maybe hold things. We have not yet done a road trip in this car, so I don't know how it's going to work out for that, but I will film when we get ready to take our road trip next month so that you can see that if you're interested there. And I think that's mostly it. Those are the pros, cons that I've seen. Those are the features of the car. I did not show you the storage, I guess, in the trunk other than to say my double stroller fit and you have plenty of room. But there are a couple of like little storage pouches or whatever, so I will show you that real quick. So kind of here you can see this cubby, I keep all of my reusable shopping bags. This, I usually keep our picnic blanket. And then over here is the 12 volt. There is no spare tire in here. Spare tire is actually under that rear facing seat there. It goes under that seat. And then you do have kind of like the grocery bag clips there. If you use that, I pack my bags way too heavy to be able to use those to be honest, but um, they are there if you don't. So that is the tour. Let me know if you have any other questions. I will try to answer all I can in the um, comments below. The gas filler upper gas tank is on the left side, the driver side, if you need to get gas. I was a little confused by that because in the car, the when the gas light pops up, it's on the right side. So I thought, oh, right, no, it's on the driver's side. And just to let you know, it gets about 270-ish miles for a 19 gallon tank. So I've been filling up with our driving about every week and a half, um, if that if that helps you at all or gives you some insight. So there we are. Hope you enjoyed this. I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.